Howdy. As the year's coming to a close here, I wanted to revisit one of my favorite projects that I've made in 2025, my DIY injection molder. Unfortunately, this thing's been sitting mostly unused for the past eight or nine months since I built it. Injection molding is something that I'll be utilizing a lot for some long-term projects, but it's too easy to keep pushing back deadlines on those big dreams, and that's something I want to get back to in 2026. So let's crack this thing out and make something with it. I'm thinking a good simple test mold could be some of these little audio knobs that are on all my synths. Even with little mixers and my audio interface, they all use a pretty standardized stem. So if I get one good mold, I can just make a bunch of them and throw them on all my audio gear. For this first attempt, I'm going to make a mold using my old aluminum cases and some extra knobs. I'll be trying something I've never done before called a gang mold. Everything I've made previously with this machine has been pretty simple. The machine melts a bunch of plastic, pushes it into the mold, tiny vents allow for any trapped air to escape, pull the part out, trim off any excess, and you're done. A gang mold is the same idea, but with multiple parts coming out of one mold. This means I need a bunch of little connected paths so that when I inject the plastic, it fills out all eight cavities for these knobs and proper venting to the outside so no air pockets can get stuck in there. I don't know how well it'll work, but my idea for this mold was to split the plastic into four routes that each fill two knobs. Here's a rough visualization of how I think the melted plastic should go through it. I roughly laid out these routes by just super gluing pieces of wire to the parts, applied mold release to the whole thing, and I'll just cast around all of it. My mold release here was literally synthetic engine oil, by the way. It's a bit rough, but this will just be an initial proof of concept of the idea. I mixed up a bunch of water-based filling putty to be the main base of my mold. Now, I tested this stuff for mold making in a previous video and decided it wasn't strong enough, but it should be good for a few casts just to see if the gang mold is going to work at all. It's about 20 times cheaper than making a press mold with epoxy. The one spot on this mold where I will need some extra strength is on the other half. I decided I'd use some epoxy for just the little stems that go into each knob. I figured if I molded them out of water putty, they would definitely snap when trying to remove each part. So I used epoxy for those bits and shoved some pins through them to act as kind of rebar to keep everything together on that side of the mold. Maybe overkill, but I don't know how well the epoxy binds to the water putty. And with that, I could pour the rest of the mold. I started with a shallow layer, tapped out any air bubbles that could be in there, and finished off the mold all the way to the top. I was trying a whole bunch of experimental stuff here that I hadn't done before, so I wasn't sure if this would work out very well, but after letting it cure and splitting it apart, it seems like my mixed material mold actually worked. The last step before giving it an actual test was just getting all the original parts out. There we go. All right. Should be a mold. The water putty seems like it's set up pretty hard at this point. There could be some trial and error here. I might have to open up these intake holes a little bit. Also these little pegs that the inside of the knob is actually formed off of aren't perfect. So even if I get a good cast, it's not guaranteed they'll fit well without some cleanup. But for today, I don't really care if I get any good parts out of it. I'm just trying to learn how gang molds work and if my machine can handle it. Just to work out some of the kinks before I go and get a proper mold milled out of aluminum. We'll just have to test it out and see what we can do. This definitely needs to go outside. It's going to make some crazy fumes. Alright, let's see if I remember how to work this thing. Lamp still works. Now, I don't remember what temperature I used to run this at, but we'll figure that out for now. I just need to get the mold warming up. Get some mold release on there to make sure the parts release nicely. That goes up into the vise. Actually, I forgot this mold is too big for the machine. So I gotta run it like this with just a C-clamp on it. Well, it looks like it's heating up all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some uh, plastic pellets in there to get melting. Cap it off. If you haven't seen any of my videos on building this thing, it's basically just a giant motorized glue gun. Plastic goes in this metal barrel here to be melted. There's some heating elements and then motorcycle exhaust wrap to keep it all contained. 
I've got it set on the controller to 280 degrees right now. And this plunger is motorized up and down so that it can force all that melted plastic through the nozzle at the bottom into the mold. Really a simple machine, not too hard to build. I reused the motorized frame off of a uh, film photo enlarger to make this thing. Are we at temp? Oh yeah, there's a little bit of plastic coming out. If I lift this up, I want it to get to a point where the plastic is just kind of dripping out. I want it maybe a bit more liquid than that. Yeah, that looks fine. Let's go for it. Why not? Here goes nothing. I don't know if that filled out or not, but we'll see. What I've found so far is you kind of got to get a feeling for each mold and how much plastic it needs to take. It's possible that just got gummed up in the very first vents and nothing happened. We'll see. I'm gonna pull it off for now. I know some of you might be saying, why don't you just 3D print these? The idea with injection molding is you can get as much detail as you want. It all comes down to how high quality your mold is and it's much more repeatable and faster in theory. You know, if I were just making the eight of these that are in this mold, it would be faster to print. But if I were needing to make 8,000, this would be faster. Uh, seems like my plastic is cooling off. Let's just crack this thing open and see what adjustments we gotta make. Yeah, nothing. As expected, the plastic came through the intake. It did successfully split across the four vents, but kind of got caught up in there. It's a good start though. I might just have to widen these paths a little bit. I guess it's also pretty likely that I got a bit impatient and didn't let my plastic uh, heat up enough. It is a bit cold outside, but let's widen these intake holes just for good measure. And I'll open up the connection between the first row and the second row of knobs as well. This is all kind of rough test work and then if I wanted to uh, do a large production run of these knobs, then I could kind of go off these measurements, redesign something and get it fully milled out of aluminum to have a proper mold. The goal for this episode is just a decent proof of concept. Stick that mold back together and I'll give the plastic a little more time to melt here. Oh yeah, that's very liquid. Let's give it a shot. There we go. Yeah, that took a lot more plastic. I believe that's some coming out of the air vent, which should be a good sign. All right, let's see, how did we do on this cast? Oh, still nothing. Mold is probably still cold. That would be my best guess. I really wish I had a garage. I always end up doing this injection molding outside during the winter. All right, let's run it again, round three. Well, that's not good. It's taking a lot of pressure. Maybe my air vents aren't big enough. Maybe we got something. Oh, huh. Looks like it did fill out. There might be air pockets in there, but we got four knobs at least. Uh, but the outer ones did not stick for whatever reason. Let's see if these are anything or if it's just the bottom that filled. Hey. Oh wow, it actually did fill. Holy cow. Looks like it pulled off a little bit of material from the mold here and there, but that is definitely the knob that I cast. Pretty sick. Yep, two filled out. And there's three and four. Somehow we actually went four for four on the molds that it actually hit. The arms off to the sides uh, stopped, like right here on both sides. So I'm just gonna clear that up a little more just to make sure the plastic doesn't get caught up there. And we'll see if we can get it to fill those other two paths. While I wait for this next batch of plastic to melt up, quick Squarespace ad read to help pay the bills. Squarespace is the all-in-one site builder with all the tools you need for a whole variety of creative pursuits and businesses. They make it really easy to buy a domain or link one you already have, get started with one of their huge selection of well-designed website templates, and easily make all kinds of adjustments to your preference. You can set up right away with Squarespace payments to run your business however you like, whether that's digital products, physical products, donations, memberships, whatever kind of site you're putting together, Squarespace makes it easy to do both the design and the workflow just how you want it. So you can go to squarespace.com, put something together, tinker around for free, and when you're ready to launch, use code Evan Monsma for your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's see if we can get this injection molder to work properly. All right, attempt four, let's run it. I 
think that's better. I wonder if the air vents might need to get opened up a little more as well. All right. Oh, well, good news and bad news. Looks like we got six good ones. These two didn't quite fill. Probably air vents aren't open enough. Um, but it also looks like I've ruined the stem on three of them. Even though I did the epoxy to make it a bit stronger, it still just didn't hold up. Uh, these three snapped off, but that's to be expected with the DIY draft mold. These are filling out nicely though, and the gang mold concept works, which is what I wanted to test out today. Oh boy, this thing is heavy. Okay, so to debrief from this experimentation session, the knobs on this mold surface level don't look that good, but these results are actually very promising. Obviously the mold has degraded and left a bunch of crap on the pieces. I'm realizing I think that water putty is actually somewhat porous and so the plastic sort of grabs into it. It's a good cheap draft material though to test stuff out. I probably used like 10 cents of putty on that mold. The really promising thing here is that the knobs are actually filling out with pretty minimal venting. Injection molding can get pretty complicated with like even moving parts like pistons to push things out. So the fact that I can make whole sets of these uh, with a very simple two part mold, that's great. Now that last one didn't completely fill out all eight, but it got to all of them. It was just the air vent not being open enough. And to do that, I used much less than half of the chamber capacity maybe less than a third even, which means this machine should be fully capable of doing a well-made mold like that of, you know, 16 or 24 uh, knobs of this size. And as I found from my test run in Milwaukee with uh, Trent from Miscast, I can pump these out pretty quickly once I get rolling with it and everything's up to temp. So say if I made a gang mold milled out of aluminum all proper, there's 24 knobs in there and maybe I make two molds so that while one is cooling off to be opened up, I can be injecting the next one. Say I'm averaging one mold extrusion per minute. At 24 parts a mold, what's 24 times 60? Like 1300 something? Over a thousand knobs an hour on this machine that I put together with a bunch of crap. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. I want to sell products. I want to, I want to make things. I could run a full scale production, a little bits and bobs here. If I want, I know the results from today might not look that good, but believe me, <laughs> this is going somewhere. I think the big change I'll make for the proper iteration of this is rather than splitting the path into four and then having each of those route into a second part on each row, I think it'll work better to do like a tree mold where the intake is here. It runs one big valve down the whole thing and we split off a bunch of parts off the sides. Or another good option could be inject from the top and have it split out like an X to a bunch all around. Likely some combination of those two. I'm not certain yet what item will be the first one I try to do this full scale production on. There's a lot of things like the little drill bit holder I designed for my impact driver that I think are better off being 3D printed. You're only gonna need one or two of these and the layer lines don't matter. But something like audio knobs where the quantity is much higher and they're tactile, like I don't want layer lines on those kind of things, makes sense to injection mold. And I like the idea of having one coherently designed knob style that I can do in a bunch of different sizes for all kinds of different gear and uh, like little slider levers that match. It's hard to find that sort of thing if you want all your synths and mixers to have the same style. I'm rambling at this point, but I'm getting excited about the possibilities that I can do with this machine. I'm gonna do more of these videos that are small updates in larger projects. I feel like I've been shying away from a lot of my ongoing projects and I wanna get back to that mixed in with the uh, smaller stake stuff. That's all, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. I will see you in 2026 and thank you for your time.